What's good, y'all? Welcome to my review for this week's episode of My Hero Academia Season 5. Bro, yo. This episode was fucking awesome. I would probably say, Loki, this was probably the best episode of Season 5 so far. Now, we don't know how long that will last. Maybe next week, once we get to Easy Goes Final, we say, that's the best episode of Season 5. We'll have to wait and see, ladies and gentlemen. But, bro, this episode was fucking amazing. And, yo... Shout outs to Horikoshi, man, because my god, this episode did such a beautiful job of showing off Bakugo's growth um, since really the beginning of this year. Season 2, more specifically. But as you guys remember, when he, when him and Izuku worked together to try to defeat All Might, Bakugo wasn't exactly pleased with the, with the team up. <laughs> um, so yeah, man, like, this episode was just so good, man. So good. So, just such a fantastic episode, man. Yeah, not really much more I can say other than I'm, I was shocked how quick it was because y'all might remember my review last week. I said, oh, this is the next four episodes I'm going to do reactions for. Two for Bakugos, fight, and then the other two will be easy. I was like, nope. Nope, it was all done in one, in one, in one episode. <laughs> but, um, yeah, man. Not really much more to say other than, let's just jump right in, boys. So we start this episode off. We got we start with Saro and Jiro. They're all kind of like walking. They're just kind of like running around and like swinging around the environment. We then actually see some of the members of Class B, which <laughs> straight up, one of these dudes straight up looks like a scarecrow. I'm not even joking. You cannot tell me that doesn't even look mildly like a scarecrow, which I'm sure was inspired by the villain Scarecrow. You know, but I always thought it was kind of funny. I was like, "What the dude's trap looks like a scarecrow." They're like, "Oh, you know, this is gonna be a pain in the ass. The team is so balanced, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera, et cetera. So <laughs> we then get back to Vlad, and the man goes on about how each team has a win each and loss each and a tie each. But he's like, "Oh, but he's like, oh, but Class A, so and it was mostly thanks to to Shinzo. Can you even say they had the upper hand?" And of course, now we didn't get stop the bias commentary. I, I legit, I do not know why they stopped with the stop the bias commentary. This, this, that shit was going. Were people complaining? Did the did the joke get old with some manga readers or something? Why have I not seen stop the bias commentary for a while? Regardless of such, I miss stop the bias commentary. Oh, regardless. We got you. Anyway, we have like, it was like, um, it was like, uh, Kaminari, Tok Tokoyami, and a few others. They were kind of like, hey, you know, that's a really mean way of you putting it, Mr. Vlad. And, you know, they're kind of like just arguing. And then, <laughs> and then actually, um, Ayazawa gets right behind and tells him, but it's true though. What, would you see the same thing happen to you? What he said was a fact. <laughs> and it's just like, oof. <laughs> so. And then, of course, Lonoma gets in on the action, calling them troublemakers, and now they're all, and it's trouble brought on by their impure, by their immaturity, and my man's just going off. And of course, Kendo comes in there with the karate chop. You gotta love Lonoma, man. So funny, man. I'm very curious to see what will happen with him in season, once we get the Bakugos fight. Or Izuku's fight, rather. And actually, and also the, 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 the shot of Tokoyami's face there while Lonoma's going off is fucking amazing, man. 10 out of 10 for that. <laughs> anyway, we have, anyway, we get to All Might and Midnight. The guy discussing, you know, and, you know, he's trying to, or, and also, I saw mentioned how Class A or Class B, rather, I almost forgot to mention that. They've been working a lot harder to bring up, like, counterattacks and countermeasures to Class A. So, you know, which, to be fair, they're right, because usually Class B, they've been the ones that have been very adaptive in these matches. You haven't really seen. Class A really adapt all that much, while it's been Class B, the ones that have kind of been adapting their plans and working around to try and figure out how to win, to be fair. Class A, we haven't really seen them doing that much at all, so I would definitely didn't have a point there. Anyway, so as they're talking, they're, they're mentioning, all oh my guy talks about Class A, and the midnight's like, oh, you like Class A? And, she, and my man's like, oh, no, 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 I like everybody. But then he has an internal world of saying, I'm looking forward to seeing what you're doing, young Bach. So then we are finally back to with my boy Bakugo. And of course he's telling, of course my man's up in the sky, you know, using his explosions to glide around while Sero, Jiro, and the rest are trying to, are chasing after him. It tells him to follow him, speed up, you slow pokes, just Loki kind of insult. And they're like, and they're eventually like, oh, he hasn't changed much of anything. But then Jiro mentions that he's at least cooperating, which to be fair is definitely a major improvement for Bakugo since season two. Where my man would not dare cooperate with nobody. He was a one-man team, a one-man show. He would do everything himself. We then actually get a flashback, but I guess that was, I guess it was right before 
uh, the right before the fight began, where he says, "Listen, you underlings," <laughs> which. <laughs> Oh, that was hilarious. He's like, it's not, and of course, it's Sarah on the other like, like, to stop calling us underlings and stop with the U. And then, <laughs> my man then calls Jiro ears. <laughs> you gotta love Bakugo and his fucking naming, man. His nicknames against people's fucking go to that. It's amazing. But anyway, he basically tells them all to just follow him. He's gonna take the lead. I'm just follow me and just support me. That's basically what Bakugo tells him. And Sarah's like, oh, you know, people are, they have teams on their team that are really good at counterattacks. And that they should mention that we should let Jiro find out where they are and figure out, and just find out from there. And, you know, Sarah and everyone else is kind of like nods their head. Bakugo's like, idiots. That's why we have to take the initiative. So they're still there. Don't wait for an opening. Just go for it. And then he actually hands all three of them, like, the grenades he has around on his, um, uh, he's like utility belt or whatever you want to call it. He actually throws them all the grenades. He's like, hey, it doesn't have much power, but you can use it. Which I was surprised, which I think this is actually, it does mark the first time we've ever seen these grenades in use, because Bakko's had these things all around him for, I want to say the entire series, as long as, for as long as Bakko has had his hero costume. But I think this is the first time we actually ever saw them get in use. Anyway, we are then back to where we are presently, where everyone chased after Bakko, and Jiro's wondering if this plan is even going to work at all. So while Bakko is kind of like out in the front, kind of looking at surveying the area, he notices some movement, like right quick. So he obviously lands, he tells Jiro, which of course he calls her ears again to like search out and scope out the area to see where they're located. She is, but she's hearing low, but she's hearing shit from all sorts of directions. So obviously she can't really pinpoint on where any of the actual uh, class B members are actually at. And I guess she like picked up on this and she's like, you got me. So then Bakugo looks to his side and there's uh, Takage's, or uh, yeah, Takage's mouth. He's gonna like, hey, game over. Bakugo like, strikes sweet man, but of course she dodges it and her body starts to like form together. And we find out that her core basically is that like, that like, was, I think it was called like lizard tail splinter, I believe it was called. Basically she can just like split her body apart and, like into like 50 pieces and move them around free. Which, I was actually kind of surprised that it was lizard bait, because given the costume, um, and given the obvious inspiration of said costume, of said design, I expected it to be something cat-like, <laughs> but I guess Hoda Coach was like, no, 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 it will not be a cat-like quirk, it in fact will be fucking lizards. So, hey, <laughs> Hoda Coach got me there, but anyway. We then we then start to see two class B start to work together. We have, or Sarah starts to like glue like starts to like tape around with the like the around the surrounding area he's in. I'm assuming it was meant to be like some sort of barrier to like keep the the pieces from getting close to them or something. I also don't really know what Sarah was doing with all the tape around him. He tells Bob over here. Well, he's kind of like dodging like the the pieces that are coming after. Him. And then the glue, and then the scarecrow guy uses his attack called glue squirrel, basically, which basically just turns everything into, which basically glues on the entire area. And Sarah's like, "Shit, it backfired." And so we find out the dude's name is Kojiro Bondo, and basically his uh, quirk is, um, and basically his quirk is that he can shoot out glue um, and can control how fast it dries. Which you know, very, which is a very interesting quirk and can definitely be used for some horror elements if if Horikoshi really wanted to, which. Definitely wouldn't surprise me given the scarecrow aesthetic, like I said earlier. But anyway, regardless. Anyway, so, so then actually, then so then another one of the guys comes in there and he, or yeah, one another guy, one of the guys. Who, I swear to God, dude, and I believe it was this guy. This dude has like he's like razor edge things, and I think his even name, his hero name was like Jack Mantis or something. This dude straight up looks like that one dude from Black Clover, that like Mantis looking dude from Black Clover. I swear to God, he looks just like him. You, you cannot tell me there was at least some inspiration. Black Clover was already publishing, and I believe by the time this started airing, the anime had already started. I think was, I think Black Clover anime was still somewhat earlier on when it aired, but you cannot tell me there wasn't some inspiration there. He looked very similar to that Mantis dude from Black Clover. I'm just saying. He looked. I, 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 I even mentioned this in my reaction to the episode. I was like, yo, that has to be the dude from the Mantis dude. From Black Clover, he looks just like him. So anyway, enough of the Black Clover talk. Man, this Ma Mantis, Jeff Mantis, slices up like the pipes in the surround area that's covered up in glue with the tape. They obviously then they start to just drop down towards the guys, and because they're covered in tape and glue, if you touch them, you're stuck. So obviously you're gonna. So obviously you either gotta try to get out of the blast radius, or get out of the drop or the like the drop area of where the pipes are coming down to, or you're gonna get stuck. But anyway, but regardless of such, Sarah is still 
try um yeah Sero still tries to somewhat protect his teammates but Bakugo comes in the comes in, coming in clutch blasts all that stuff away from them and yo my man was looking fucking badass too when he was doing it's like yo like yo and so then the man and so then Jack Mantis comes after Jiro but a man like legit kicks her out of the way and then blasts this dude up right in point blank range at this point I'm like yo Yo, yo, what the fuck? Bakugo is saving people? What the fuck is this? All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting into it. Now it's getting good. And of course, we see all my Izuku's face, and they're both just like, holy shit. So he's so after he like saves Jiro, which was like I said, was shocking in of itself. And yet he's, and I think it was like all my even they said like, all my said to save people to win. And I think Izuku said to win, win to save people. I think is what they said. It was something along those lines anyway. Anyway, after he sees Jiro, he goes after him again, and he's like, Oh, bugs have good reflexes, huh? And fires him again, which, by the way, another thing that I swear to God proves that there is at least some correlation between this character and that other character from Black Clover, the fact this dude also rocks green. The color of that, um, fucking, um, uh, group, I forget what they're called in Black Clover, I'm slipping on the names of them, but whatever, they also rock green. I swear to God, there has to this has to be like a nod or something to Black Clover. You cannot tell me that Horikoshi that there isn't any correlation between these two. There has to be something. Anyway, I just really noticed that, and I was like, "Yo, did, yo, did Horikoshi like Loki got like steal a design for Black Clover?" <laughs> Either way, after he sends that other dude flying. Bakugo lands, he tells Jiro to look that they got away to look for them again and that. But and this is when Bakugo straight up goes straight up crazy. This is when he goes into Mamba mode. He has become the Mamba. The black Mamba. He tells like I will have complete I have decided I will have complete victory. 4-0. No injuries. Cause that's what a proof that's really strong with too. You know, and Bakugo paints with this whole thing, man, looks fucking awesome, man. It, it was absolutely fucking brilliant. And like and now obviously there's a lot to unpack there with Bakugo and he and Bakugo and him saving Jiro and everything. Which I will go a lot more in depth in showing off the world of Bakugo in a separate discussions video for this episode. So yes, once again the streak will continue in episode nine and episode nine season five will get a separate episode discussion for you guys I'll drop sometime by next week. I don't know when Gotta record. I don't know how long it's gonna take me to record and edit everything, but you guys will be getting another episode uh, discussion along with an episode reaction to this episode. Anyway, just wanted to give you guys that announcement, so, yeah. Anyway, so afterwards, we then get back over to, to Monoma and Kaminari Kirishima. Monoma's rubbing, rubbing his eyes. He's like, <laughs> yeah, I must be seen. Did, did, did Bakugo just save Jiro? Does it look like he did? And, and Kaminari's like, yes, yes, he did. And he's like, and then you can see Kaminari, and then, G and then fucking um, Monoma just starts, like, his eyebrows are twitching. He's like, what? <laughs> You're telling me his personality changed! And you can see that Monoma's entire plan, this is entire like, grand scheme for this by that, oh yeah, the class needs to take this one because Bakugo can't work with others for shit. They have this in the bag. You can see yes, now Monoma realizes that he has done fucked up. That not only that Bakugo is working together, he's doing a damn good job at it. <laughs> so he knows he's fucked. And so man is absolutely so the man is absolutely just loosed in that. It was fucking hilarious, man. Monoma Loki, one of the best characters in this entire series. He's so entertaining to watch. So after all of that happened and Bakugo saved Jiro and everything, then plus we realized that obviously we're going in a straight up face to face, you know, confrontation out here. We're obviously not gonna win this fight. We're gonna need to regroup and, you know, try to figure out how to beat this because we can't obviously do it head to head. Obviously we cannot we will definitely lose it. So they all start to retreat. And one thing, I always forgot to mention this, I don't even know how I forgot to mention this, I guess I was just so excited that I just forgot to mention it, but when Bakugo saved Jiro and everything, when Bakugo saved Jiro and everyone was just shot, Bakugo, we just got some narration from Bakugo saying that, if you guys are ever in trouble, I'll save you, which, bro, like, with how great this episode was, especially for Bakugo and everything, the voice said also was fantastic as well from uh, Bakugo's Japanese voice actor, I'm low-key thinking about doing a double or doing a second reaction to this episode when the dub of it is because I gotta hear how Clipper Champa delivers this shit because it's probably because it's gonna be fucking awesome. So you guys might see another reaction, a double reaction for this episode once the dub of F version this episode drops. Um, I think a couple of weeks I think is when that episode when we're probably getting this episode the dub. I haven't been keeping up with the dub of your watching five because I'm of season five because I'm watching it via two I'm not actually you know, watching it as they drop the episodes. I just watch it on YouTube because I was just like, yeah I'll just watch it then and gonna watch them anyway, so I'll just watch them with Tsunami. But this one I'll make the time for and find definitely for release and all that shit. Anyway, 
So, as they're retreating, he tells Jiro to, like, look for them. They've got a way to try and find where they are. Jiro, once again, there's so much noise out there, but she can't, she can't really pinpoint anything. But if she concentrates, she can start to make them out, and she does know there's a lot less of them. So, and that's when Bakugo realizes that they're starting retreating, so he goes after them. Which, as he, and as he does, we as you see, like, he, he goes, first goes after, um, well, first off, we get some amazing animation of Bakugo, like, running around the area. It looks so looks so cool. But then we actually find out another member of Class B is this guy, um, Wielder. His partner's is Wield. Uh, I, think it was like his, I think his name was like Asue or something. Uh, yeah, Asue. I believe that's how you say it, right? Where his quirk is wheel. Basically, this dude can, like, wield anything together on a molecular level, but he got to touch it beforehand. So he, so he ends up wielding Bakugo in place between these two pipes where he has, like, these, like, I don't know what these are, like, steel, like, I don't know what you call them, like, steel bricks or whatever. And, like, basically wielded Bakugo's gauntlets to, like, to, to the pipes around him, as well as some on the back, so he can't really move. So he can't really move from where he's at. So he's, like, so obviously Bakugo's trying to struggle out there, but he can't really move. Saro tries to try to capture him, but he obviously, but he misses. Then Sato comes in there, fucking orders that shit and frees a Bakugo before he starts to chase after him. Which, and so, so, so first he goes after that guy, and he's, and he's, and so he goes after his guy, like, how there's like a big puff of smoke that's right, right in front of him as he, like, pulls up the shield to, like, obviously deflect Bakugo's, you know, uh, explosions. He says, I'll leave this to you guys, and then, so he got flips over him and continues on over to the glass dude, to the blue dude, blue dude, excuse me, and he, in which leaves Sero and, uh, Jiro to take care of this guy. We get another narration from Bakugo saying, uh, that if you guys are ever in trouble, I'll save you guys. I'll save you guys. And then if you guys are ever, and if I'm member of trouble, you'll save me. Which, bro, so good. So uh, so then Jiro like takes like those speakers off of like those like gauntlet things she has like on her wrist, sends them out there after she like plugs in her earphone jacks them, and sends it and like hits them right with right point blank range after after they get rid of his shield. And so that so that takes care of him. They get to the, and from there they manage to capture him. So as Bakugo is going, so then Bakugo goes up to the blue guy. He starts firing with a bunch of like rapid fire, like explosions all around him, discombobulating him enough for Sato to come in there, capture him by locking in the cross arm breaker. Yes, my man went full on a Boto del Rio with that motherfucker. <laughs> Probably should be referencing him because I think the dude's in prison now, but <laughs> whatever, we'll go with it. <laughs> So I'm, and also Bakugo's complained how it's hard to like work in the how it's hard to work in the winter, but he's finally warmed up now. <laughs> so by this point, obviously, obviously by this, so at this point, Nato Mo Monoma is obviously losing shit. He's like, "Fuck, we've already lost two of our guys in like the span of like a minute of like thirty seconds of it, of it, of that." So he grabs Mantis and then starts spinning around and sort until he like turns into like a tornado, which I'm pretty sure we haven't seen Bakugo use his attack since like season two. But anyway, he like spins him around a bunch and says, X catapult! And he just throws his ass into a wall. Which then up, which then Sarah grabs him to capture him. So, ah, so they're now down 3 1. So now we're down 4 1 with the, with class A versus class B in this in this thing. Like in like under like a minute. It's been like a minute or whatever, and they've already gotten three. It's fucking insane. So anyway, so then Sarah sees like one of like the uh, pieces of like Toei's body, like kind of like, like right, goes right past him, and he tries to figure out like what's going on with their quirk, tries to like fully understand what she's doing, and so he comes to the conclusion that basically that that to like reason the time of like whoever quirk works, because you know there's probably a time and she can't probably can't regenerate indefinitely, that she's obviously bringing back the pieces to reset the time and regain her stamina and such. So what my man does is Sarah puts a little bit of tape to one of the pieces of her body and sticks it to the grenade that he had from Bakugo. Now she ends up managing to dodge it, but then Bakugo, but then she's like, oh, that's close. But then out of nowhere, Bakugo comes in there and unleashes a Kamehameha right in point blank range of this woman. And she says, you've changed too much! As my Bakugo, as my Bakugo lands his Kamehameha. So then, and then Bakugo says, I have not changed at all. My goal has stayed the same, become the number one hero in Surpass All Might. Also, um, yeah, Kaminari and Kirishima mentioning how, man, the bot that Bakugo being the band really helped him out, really helped him out, especially being, with, like, being the drummer and everything. So, <laughs> maybe until then, yeah, that's kind of does. Which maybe it could, that could have been a film, or it could have been, like, you know, what happened in season three. Yeah, but either way, it was either way, it's interesting. So after all is said and done, by this point, we are a little over halfway through the episode. We are about like 14 some odd minutes into the episode by this point. Y'all want to know how long this how long this match was in real time? Under five minutes.
Yes, you heard me right, ladies and gentlemen. While this took up like a good first half of the entire episode in real time, this match only lasted less than five minutes. Goddamn. Goddamn, man. Look, like, my man Bakugo just straight up buried Class P at this point. This man went at this shit like he fucking Goldberg. He'd be in here with that your next shit. I'm surprised we'd not see him unleash a jackhammer on one of these fools. Hit that spear with how quickly he was uh, with how quickly he was burying everybody, how quickly he captured them. But regardless of such. So after that, but, um Aizawa gives them the thumbs up, tells them that they did great, that they didn't cry, do, then they didn't cause more damage than what necessary, and they quickly um you know captured and put them in the in the in, in jail after this they're, they're slowly, you know, capturing them. So, you know, they so they did good. But so Aizawa was very proud of his boys. They did good, they did a good job. Now, flat on the other hand, he was like, Kick! He's like he was like, Oh, it was a good plan with the data that we had available, but Y'all were too stuck. Y'all should have been a little bit more flexible. So, and you can see how much it pained Vlad to say that, that. That once again, his class took the L. So anyway, then as Bakugo is walking around, you got Kaminari and the others are joining in. They're like, "Oh, you can work together with others if you try, Bakugo." You know, and like then he mentions Jiro was like a heroine, and Jiro says she's a hero, even though I'm pretty sure those. To the are the exact same thing. I don't know what that was about. Maybe that was just a mistranslation or something. I don't fucking know. Regardless of such, then <laughs> next had Sarah mentioned that oh, it was like Bakugo was taking care of a stray cat. She's like I'm human though. So then, so then Bald Knight meets the Bakugo. Baku rather meets up with All Might, and All Might looks at him and says, "I got you." With this giant smile on his face, he says, "I got chills." And my man's like, "Did you catch a cold or something?" And then you have my boy, my boy Isuka. He comes over there to congratulate his friend, and you know, and as soon as he says, "Catch on," Baku says, "Move, scum!" Which fucking kills me when I watch that. <laughs> I was like, that shit just killed me when he just, as soon as Itsuka says Katsha, man says Moose, I mean, though he's just not even, like, in his way or anything. <laughs> Fucking bro, then he calls him stupid trash scum and just tells him to fuck off as Izuku tells him that you dealt with, I won't let you surpass me, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> and so, then all my joints up with Izuku and says he has a good show, it's pretty much. I don't know, but that one said, don't worry, just gonna forget about the fact that that Akko told Izuku to kill himself after season one, I'm just saying. And he also wished he, he, Baku would talk, would talk more politely about that. Anyway, so then we get to Mona. My man is, of course, has his eye twitching at the fact that once again, Class B took the L and because of the tie, and because of the tie, they can't win. Class B can't win anymore, and Class A's basically has won the game by default. The last game is just a fucking, fucking, you know, uh, fucking, um, uh, can't think of the word, but you guys get what I mean, so. <laughs> So anyway, so and he then he kind of like I, I don't know if my man Mono just went insane or something, but he's like, no, this is a good thing that Bakugo has changed, and now he, and he just kind of goes on and on and says that people are the pro that other that every other people have side characters in every other's lives, but the protagonist of their own lives. Honestly, I didn't know what the fuck this man was saying at this point. I don't know what this man's going on about. Maybe he's just gone insane. Maybe he's just rambling. At this point. Anyway, either that, then the rest of his teammates kind of talk, and they kind of talk amongst themselves, including the dude that straight up looks like a member of the Ginyu Force with that fucking scouter on, like legit. That has to, there's, you cannot tell me that's not a Dragon Ball Remy. You cannot tell me that isn't even, that, that isn't remotely based off a of Dragon Ball, because it is. That man has straight up has a scouter on him. That is straight up a scouter. <laughs> you can't tell me otherwise. Anyway, so while they're actually discussing, they're trying to figure out what to do um, against Izuku's team. They, one of the mentions, I thought it was a scouter dude, mentions that they should like keep that because their quirks, that most of their effort, or the quirks order on this team is more technical based, they should, that they're better off just keeping this at a longer range rather than like, you know, hiding around and, and picking their spots rather than making this close counters fight. And of course, make it easy because they're focused on making sure they get rid of him first because, you know, one for all and all that shit. Now, one thing that's interesting I found, we found out in this episode, was that we found out that Monoma can't copy every single quirk there. Monoma mentions as they're talking that he that there's a good chance he might not be able to copy Izuku's quirk, which would be very interesting. That would make sense given how one fall works, being being though it's passed down from generation to generation. So there is a good chance that Monoma can uh, can't copy it for that reason. 
We'll have to wait and see next week, if, I guess, if, if, Monoma, if Monoma can copy his quirk, or we'll even have the chance to. But I thought it was interesting that Monoma, it does have the limit, he can't copy every single quirk he comes in contact with. So I thought that was interesting. Then we get over to Izuku's team. You have Udaraka, Mina, and Mineta. They're kind of already, they're already kind of doubting themselves. They're like, oh, all these other guys can, like, you know, hide around and not make the presence known and attack us. Well, all we can do is make shit float, melt, and stick. We're fucked. We're at a disadvantage. Then Izuku comes in and says, no, 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 no. We, we can do this. You know, we can do this. And also, my boy has a superhero landing, which was also very nice to see. So, and they also asked him if Izuku's quirk, lab out quirk, Izuku's quirk me was messing around with them a little bit earlier, but he says it's fine now, so. Yep, and that's basically where the episode ends, with Izuku and the boys charging towards, charging forward, so. Yeah, man, great, a fantastic episode, man. Absolutely loved it. Definitely expect an episode reaction as well as an episode discussion in the coming days for, for this episode, guys. And, yeah, man, don't really got much more to say other than I'm excited for next week, and you guys will definitely begin reacting for next week's episode as well, because it's my boy Izuku. <laughs> anyway, guys, overall, I give this episode a 10 out of fucking 10. So, anyway, hope you all enjoyed the video. You can like, and subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you like it. Links down in the description box below. And as always, come back for more. See you guys next time.